Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys, welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in a zone 4B. So today I'm going to be taking you on a little project I have going on. As you may know, we have had maybe about half of an acre of buckthorn removed from the back here. And there's little spots that I'm slowly starting to plant up. So I'm going to be suppressing the weeds with some cardboard mulching, just using the no dig method. And I'll insert a clip here so you can kind of see the before. Okay, so let me take you down through my backyard here. Now this is all a work in progress. To the far right, we have a big root ball there because there's some trees that fell down. So we're clearing that. We're gonna be, end up putting a vegetable garden in that area over there. But this is the area here that we're gonna focus on. Just behind these, like hostas, there's a couple shrubs and behind that, is all where the buckthorn was just mulched up. Um, I have some viburnum, snowball bush viburnum, um, planted in a few areas here, as you could see right here, but look all around it. There's large sticks and there's just buckthorn mulch. So what I'm going to do is just rake out some of the big sticks, take it back to the wood pile, and I'm just gonna be taking out some of the buckthorn seedlings, um, ripping those out or cutting them with some loppers and cardboarding and mulching. So it'll just be a nice blank dark background. It just will look so much better. The cardboard will at least suppress some of those buckthorn ceilings for a season or two. Um, and yeah, I cannot wait for this to be done and look good because it's been like this since early spring. And we're going to be working on the far left there too. So there are a couple of different plants that I'm going to be planting back there. There's already, I recently planted some snowball bush viburnum. I got those on clearance at Lowe's for $5 each. I got four of them. So a good tip if you're ever at Lowe's looking at the clearance, if there's more than one plant, like if there's a few of the same plants, the manager it was going to be like half price at like $12, but he said if I bought all four of them, um, I can get them for $5 each. So like I said, if you see a couple of the same plants, maybe find a manager and see if they'll give you a better deal if you take them all. So we have those planted back there. Those will get substantially big, like up to um, six to 10 feet tall and wide. So, and I'm gonna be kind of pruning them into more of like a tree form. Um, I also am going to be planting two plants that I did in a recent video. Let me insert a clip here of that video. It is going to be some Baptisia and also some Siberian Iris. So I'll show that here. So this is a Siberian Iris. This actual variety is called Kaboom. So these like moisture, not a ton. They don't like to be like have their feet wet constantly but it does say just to keep the soil evenly moist so I'm going to be putting this in my backyard I got the perfect spot for it I got four of these we live just adjacent to the wetlands so the water table is a lot higher I think they'll do really well I can't wait till these fill in as well now these blooms are just fizzling out here because we're just getting out of season they bloom early summer the, they can do full sun to part shade they get about 30 inches tall and 12 to 18 inches wide and yeah the foliage is really pretty let me give you a, a little close up here and try to show you the plant tag it's kind of dirty there sorry but you could see they're gorgeous i mean that purple really is pretty so that's siberian iris okay so the next plant is a false indigo baptisia now i got four of these these are perennials, but they're almost as big, they get almost as big as shrubs. They get about four, four feet tall and wide. They're a vase shaped. Let me insert a picture so you could see. Um, they bloom late summer or late spring to early summer. They need sun to part shade. And they're zone three through nine. So let me give you a close up. I have one of these in another area of my garden. I loved it so much. I just wanted to add a few more. The one thing that you should know about um, Baptisia is that it does have a really deep tap root. 
So when you plant it, try to not transplant it after that. Try to just put it where it's gonna stay because they really don't like that. So that's false indigo baptisia. So besides all the cardboard and mulch that we're gonna be putting in that area, I also found one more plant yesterday at Lowe's. I've really been trying to step up my evergreen game. Um, I recently went to the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But let me insert a picture here of the Japanese garden. I mean, they just had some amazing evergreens and I really wanna plant some more evergreens around here. So I was able to find this on the clearance rack. This was normally $23 and I got it for half price. This is another Lowe's find. So it did just have some brown um, spots that I just trimmed off. I think it just got a little too dry, but I think it'll be okay. So this is the Lemon Thread False Cypress. Um, I will insert a picture of what the plant tag looks like so you could see it fully grown. So these will actually get about three to five feet tall and about four to five feet wide. And they look like kind of like weeping um, so I thought that was really cool looking. It'll get a little more yellow. I have a good spot for it. So I'll take you back there. You can kind of see, I'm not going to show the whole entire process because it took days and days. Um, I still have a little bit to go. I'm going to show you like the final bit that um, I'm going to plant up, cardboard, mulch, and then I will just show you the after. So. If you like videos like this, like of me planting and before and afters, please consider subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up so I know. Um, that would be great. So let me take you guys back there. All right, so I'm just gonna be focusing on this area today. Um, this is just kind of the back corner there. You see some astobies um, that are just in full bloom and all their glory. <laughs> so, all the buckthorn was mulched over here as well. Um, I'm going to kind of clear this area. I'm gonna plant that um, lemon thread false cypress over here. There's like a little hole that it'll fit in perfectly. Um, and I'll show you how I kind of go about this process. So first I got my trusty hoe and I got my loppers. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just rake out some of the big stuff like you know, a bush hog came in here and just mulched up all that buckthorn, but left behind a lot of larger pieces that I'll end up throwing in like the, the brush pile to burn. So I'm just going to kind of make sure there's no high spots. Um, I want it relatively flat. And I'll just kind of just brush, just uh, hoe that to the side. So... Then what I do is I take the loppers and if I see any seedlings sticking out at all, I cut those off. I just want to smother everything underneath that cardboard. So this whole process took almost all morning. I'm just going to kind of give you the highlights um, of how I go about doing this. So then I get out the cardboard. Now I make sure I overlap these cardboard pieces because if there's any areas that aren't overlapping, there's some seedlings that will come through. There's even some spots that I have um, some stumps that I'm just going to go over. I had my husband chainsaw those right to the ground. So you could do this if you're trying to, you know, clean up an area just adjacent to some woods. This worked for me in other areas, so I know this works. All right, so basically, I'm going to be planting that false cypress there. I left a hole there. I will take out any roots or any seedlings that I could find in that hole. And what I have in that bucket, I'm going to put the native soil. I'm going to shake out any roots, throw those away. And I have one part um, compost to two parts black dirt. And I have some chicken poo organic fertilizer I'll be mixing in there. So I just give that a good mix. I have very sandy soil and that's why I amend it like this. I do this for all my plants. I will give you guys a closer look once I'm done with this area. Kind of just filming by myself here. So. so anyways, yes, I'm gonna be putting that in, making sure that it's not any lower than the current soil. 
Um, I'm going to be dumping as much as I can of that mixture around the plant. And it's nice fertile soil that I'm mixing in, nice hummusy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to water that plant. And also while I'm out here, I'm just going to go ahead and water the cardboard. I do this because the wind is starting to kick up and it's just, uh, we'll kind of weigh it down. You don't have to do this step, but I think it's easier. All right, who needs the gym when you garden? Because I swear, this is just a lot of lifting. And yeah, it's great exercise though. So what I do is I do this in small sections. I don't just like dump all the mulch out everywhere. I think this whole area took about 15 bags. Um, so, and I never use a rake. I always use my hands like this, guys, because it is so much easier to kind of feel exactly the level that it's at. With the rake, I feel like I'm just pushing it around. Um, and there's holes everywhere where you can see the cardboard. And yeah, I'm kind of um, OCD when it comes to this. So I just take my time, make sure everything's covered, make sure it's a good two, two three, sometimes four inches um, thick. So usually around two to three. And there's the finished product, guys. Um, you could see that Baptisia right there, just uh, behind that uh, Sun King Aralia. Um, this is going to be just an opening here. I'm going to leave this like this because we're going to put like a pathway back into the wetlands there through the aspens. And as you can see, this is where I put the Siberian iris on each side of this pathway. So that'll grow in nice. The water table's a bit higher back here. And this is the far side there. Um, as you can see, I just put in all that new dark mulch. Doesn't it look so much better with that dark background? So I did around all the viburnums. Um, we're just going to kind of, I'm not going to plant all this up right away. We're just going to kind of let this area breathe. Um, we're going to let everything break down underneath. And we'll slowly get it planted up. But yeah, there's that lemon thread false cypress. Um, I just think it just ended up in a perfect area. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it's going to work out well. There's another shot of the Siberian iris that is called, uh, that variety is called Kaboom, like I said before. So if you can imagine, maybe I'll put some field stones through that pathway. Yeah, and that's where we ended up putting the false cypress back there. And this is just another shot from the other side. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Thank you guys for watching and happy gardening. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.